Mike with UTESC. I'm here at GoToConf 2014. I'm sitting here with Sydney Sprague, who helps with GoToConf. And help is a, help is a big word. Uh, she's been involved in helping to decide the location, the uh, finally deciding at Chicago, and all that forward searching, uh, scouting for locations, and then a lot of other stuff that's involved in. I just want to say thank you very much for taking the time to speak with me. Certainly. Uh, so what does helping mean? In the beginning, it was finding a venue that would actually take us because right. uh, Chicago is very much a convention town. Right. So all of the hotels are used to saying, well, if you're going to stay with us, you have to guarantee that uh, every attendee will book a room. Right. And they want a huge financial guarantee right up front. That's not our model. Our model right. is to appeal to the local community. We do have people coming in from as far away as Poland. Uh, right. I met someone just yesterday. Um, Belgium. <laughs> <laughs> right. But mostly this is, is for the, the local community. Mm -hmm. so. so, you know, we're here in year two, and we're back at the Drake Hotel. Yes. Um, you know, when you were looking back now, let's say over two years ago, three years ago now, uh, and, and coming and talking to the hotels, uh, what was finally brought you and what was some of the criteria you used to decide on going with, with the Drake in particular? Well, all the rest of the hotels said, you know, this is our model financially mm -hmm. and put up or shut up. So yeah. <laughs> um, we looked at a number of other venues trying to find some place that would fit mm -hmm. because we like to have enough space. We like to have, you know, great catering uh, mm -hmm. as well as the ability to interact with speakers uh, for all of the attendees. This hotel had uh, a recent uh, mm -hmm. acquisition of a new a sales manager came in and I approached her and said, so, you know, we spend a lot of money on catering because everybody wants to have a good time and you yeah. they'll stay in and coffee talk to each, and soda and all that all that stuff and they uh, the conversations in the hall are just as important as the conversations in the you know, or the, the sessions of the providers right um, so they were actually willing to be flexible they went to management and said so let's look at something different and let's mm -hmm. try this uh, so I, kind of the lesson I'm, I'm taking from that is if you're looking at a, at a location don't just take that first one. You're going to have to go in there and dig. And, and I think I looked at 20 hotels as yeah. well as a couple of uh, public venues around right. the city. So, Yeah, so that was probably a lot of footwork right there. Yes. Lots of emails, lots of phone calls. Um, but to go to the other aspect of it, from, uh, from the venue to the community, yes. uh, what about the Chicago community? And, and again, I'm a part of the Chicago community, so I want to hear nice things. Okay. But, but in all seriousness, you, you've probably had a lot of choices across the country. What was it about Chicago that, that made it a destination for go-to? Well, it actually came out of a conversation that happened when we were doing consulting, and I was working with Dave Thomas and a, a number of other people, um, and we had a large project here in Chicago. And one night over beer, it was... Mm -hmm. Why is there no major software development conference in Chicago when there are all these great tech people and lots of technology companies, but there isn't a focused software development conference? Um, and that was eight years ago. Okay. So you know, it was so a, lot a, talking, a, uh, a lot of talking. Thoughts that have come from a long time. From a long time, yes. Yeah. And Chicago seems to be, uh, if it, we have a nice... Uh, technology base here. There's a diversity of technologies. Um, it's a really fun place to come. It's an easy place to get to for speakers because of O'Hare being a central airport. Yeah, so yeah, we have O'Hare and Midway Yep. and uh, the, the metro that comes from all over. Yep. I know so, that's what I take. <laughs> well, for instance, you know, Michael Nygaard, he's a, mm -hmm. one of our speakers this year. He's a great, great speaker, but He's up in Minnesota, and he's like, it's great to be able to come to a conference where I only have to get on one airplane. <laughs> oh, yeah, not too many transfers. It's a pretty direct. Yeah. And it's actually only uh, maybe a day's drive, from, yeah. from depending on where he is. Yeah. But uh, so you were looking at Chicago as being kind of right for having a, a major conference. Coming. That's right. And uh, uh, working with the communities, uh, one of the unique things that I got to experience is that you don't just come in and plant a flag and, and say we're going to host a conference. You do some, some outreach and interaction work with user groups and, and other local communities. Can you describe how you came, actually also describe how you came to the idea of, of doing that kind of interaction? Well, this is a conference about software development 
but it's also by software developers. Mm -hmm. uh, that community is skeptical of, always about uh, about value, and right. they want to know that there's value. So they don't believe, you know, a marketing person like me. Right. They want to hear it from a developer. Uh, so it just seemed to be a natural outreach to uh, reach out to those developer mm -hmm. groups, like all the meetups that are in town. Uh, one of the problems, of course, is that they are skeptical, so they don't always answer my emails when I say, we have a network of over a thousand speakers that we've vetted, um, and we can pick from them and invite them, and they'll come because we ask them to. Right. And we, so, you know, we like to pair to improve the, you know, the offerings in the community uh, with the user groups and provide them with a tech talk evening. Right. Um, and so, so it's we, the go-to nights. The go-to nights, exactly. Yeah. Um, so I, you know, I will send an email to you know all the organizers of a, of a given right. meetup and say, hey, you know, we'd love to pair with you. We'll bring you a speaker and we'll pay for it. Right. Um, and all we want to do is to be able to you know stick up our GoTo banner. And, yeah. You know, it's all about the speaker as opposed to GoTo. But yeah, there's definitely a value, even if you did nothing with uh, as a user group or organizer. Even if I did nothing with GoTo after that, it's it's a great opportunity to just have somebody come in and bring in a fresh talk, a fresh idea that might come from outside of the normal sphere of, of, of local uh, talent. We try to bring you somebody who's not normally here. Right. Okay. And was that something that you did for the first time with GoTo, or is that, that, does that idea come from previous experience? Like, where did that idea to do this kind of outreach come from? Um, the, one I, the person I know that does it the most and that started this was, was Dave Thomas. Right. Uh, when he started with Yao, who, who was the, the kind of the parent company for, for GoTo, um, he was doing it in Australia, and he's been doing that in Australia for nine years. Okay, and that worked well there. It, so it works well there. Brought that brought that concept here. So it seemed to be the the, the natural way to evolve uh, a conference here. So, so if I'm in a uh, in a region that it's it's looking at GoTo and seeing success here in Chicago, and I think that I'm in you know. Let's say Minnesota, St. Paul, Minnesota, for example, just because we talked about Minnesota, and and I'm thinking, you know, we could, we have a tech community that could support a, a go-to conference okay. and make it financially viable. What are some of the things I need to think about um, when I want to reach out to you? Like, what would you like to hear that that would make it so that way it would be financially feasible to bring something like a go-to to your city? Well, if you're going to be in a place that's hard to get to by right. an airplane, you better actually <laughs> you better have a list of sponsors who right. say that we're going to help support this. Right. And is it also uh, being able to present like the, the the actual community itself? I mean, do you look at all of those things? Yes. Okay. For one thing, uh, you know, we we started talking to all the speakers we knew about, and you know, we're thinking about doing a go to in Chicago. What do you think? Mm -hmm. And they were all. Oh, Chicago would be great. We'd love to come to Chicago. Right. Because for, or part of it, at least, is that it's a great destination, and it's also easy to get to. And yeah. speakers, the good speakers are busy, and they travel a lot. So, yeah. you know, sending them someplace that takes 10 or 12 hours to get to. Yeah. So so sometimes you're just, if you're too far remote, it's going to be, you, yeah, it's pretty, it's, it's kind of hard. Because that's one thing that I think is, is missing in, in understanding why these conferences are so expensive. When I you look at it, and I, I know I've suffered the sticker shock many times myself, $1,200 for a two-day conference, oh my gosh, I can't, you know, like, fork that out, or my company won't fork that out. Yeah. But there's a reason for that, 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 that dollar, uh, that, that, that price. It's not, it's not uh, just an arbitrary number. Like, uh, last year, you were describing that it actually wasn't even profitable. It was not. We yeah. lost money last year. It yeah. was an investment. So. Yeah. So, but and then here you are still yet again. So you still see enough value to. Keep. We we see a future, okay? Because mm -hmm. you know, um, one of the reasons that we have a long list of speakers is that we do treat them well. Mm -hmm. And so, if we say we're going to take care of you, they're more like they, they trust us to to do that right. to, and and come into a conference. Um, so that takes that relationship that we've had. Um, I'm sorry, I've lost my train. No, no the, that, well, the relationship with the, with the speaker community yeah. so that they want to come out That's right. and, and be part of 
the conference. Yeah. Because that was a, an interesting aspect is that like you don't have a speaker room. No, we don't. That you, you push the speakers out and you're like, nope, you're going to go talk to people. Yes. And, well, that's one of the reasons to put out all the really good food. And, yeah. and yeah, you may have noticed it just kept going, right? There was right. a break and another break and then there was lunch and then there was another break, right? So uh, including mimosas to start the morning, right? Yeah, yeah, I saw those. <laughs> I, I, I knew I had a long day, so I, I didn't get to partake. But they looked delicious. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, the whole point is to, to get people to stay out in the halls when they're not in a in a in a listening to a presentation mm -hmm. so that you actually do get to walk up to Adrian Cockcroft, for instance, and say, and engage him in a conversation, right? Oh, it certainly made my job easier. Cool. <laughs> so, all right, well, I want to say thank you very much for taking the time to speak with me. Thank you very much. And thank you for letting me come and do these interviews at, uh, at GoToConf. They've been a lot of fun, two years in a row. Oh, very good. Thanks. Thank you. User groups with lots to say, interviews and more. No way. Sharing great ideas in the tech community. Fascinating conversations, a plethora of information. Find out for yourself today at ugtastic.com.